Hello and welcome to Make Lunch at USBC. My name is Linda and today we're going to learn how to make frittata. Now frittata is one of those names for um, a posh name for an omelette really and this is another one of those wonderful one pan meals that you can do and that the children will really enjoy uh, getting involved with. So as ever we're going to start with washing our hands and my hot soapy water here. Um, and this is a dish that's really easy and it's super versatile as well. So once you've uh, washed your hands and you've got somewhere safe for the children to work at, we're going to start by preparing all the lovely veg that are gonna go into that. So, oh, put that away. So today I've got a, a range of vegetables. Some of these you'll have in your box and we're gonna do lots more chopping. And we're going to start off by some onion now over the last few weeks we've been doing things where we need to chop things up in quite a small way but this week's is all about chunkiness uh, so it really doesn't matter um, how small you can get it it's about having the right sort of size so with our onion this week we're just going to chop it in half and then I'm going to chop it in half again and then just cut it into some fairly big bits. Now the alternative way of preparing this dish is to perhaps uh, roast your vegetables so that they're already pre-cooked. Um, so it's entirely up to you, it depends whether you've got the time and whether you want to do that. I'm making a really small portion today, um, but this is something that you can scale up really easily. So that's my red onion. Um, I've got some courgette here. I'm going to take a bit of my courgette and again on a flat surface I'm just going to cut it into quarters like that. Turn it over and put it onto a flat surface and I'm going to make that into small pieces like that. That's probably all I'm going to need of that. I've got a mushroom. We can do exactly the same thing. Put it onto a flat surface these are all the sorts of things that the children can help do and as we've talked about before if the children have helped prepare some of these vegetables even if they're not overly familiar to them or they're not generally very keen then they will probably have a better stab at it because they've helped to prepare it so I'm just going to take out the white of this pepper and we're going to again put that into some fairly decent sized pieces and the same with um, the red pepper here I'm just going to make a few pieces here and it really doesn't matter what veg you've got um, another one of these great recipes for using up things that you might find in the bottom of your fridge so I'm going to just quarter this tomato I wouldn't use too much tomato in this recipe because it can go a little bit on the soft side. So I've got some red onion, I've got some courgette, some tomato, some mixed pepper, some mushroom and the other thing that I'm going to put in, I've got some potatoes here that have just been cooked, they're left over cold. These are ideal. Now as you can see I haven't skinned or peeled these in any way. These are fairly new potatoes and so all the goodness is just under the skin. So just as they are and I'm just going to cut these into little bits again using just the flat side when we cut through them. There we go, that will be enough. So we're going to take our small little, I've got an omelette pan here um, you can do it in a big frying pan if you're doing it for uh, more people. So I'm going to put a little bit of oil into my pan just to cook those, ve those vegetables off. So we'll get that nice and warm. And as I said, this is one of the great things is about having, um, it's a one pan meal, so it cuts down on the washing up. So we've got courgette here. Now, it might be that some of the children don't like the idea of big pieces of uh, vegetables going in there. So the alternative is to grate them and put them in. Now this will generate a little more water, so you just need to be careful that you don't put in too much, otherwise it could make it a little on the soggy side. Um, 
but I've just taken some ordinary courgette and grated that down and that then just will go into the uh, frittata and will be almost undetectable. I'm not a fan of hiding vegetables because I think it's great that children uh, learn what those vegetables are and, and get a taste for them but if you're really struggling this is a good way and another thing you can put in is cauliflower. Now people might recall at um, putting that in but again this acts very much like the courgette it will just melt away into that frittata. Um, I love raw cauliflower uh, that might sound really bizarre but you can just pick up a little oh, a little floret that tried to run away there and um, just eat them raw providing it's clean and it hasn't got any um, soil in it you're good to go. So we're going to put our vegetables in to fry now and as with some of the other dishes we've made, this won't take very long at all. So the vegetables are cooking. I should have warned you at the beginning to preheat your grill to make sure that the grill is nice and hot because you will require a grill as well. The next thing we can do, which the children can certainly help with, is to break the eggs. So. Um, as I say, I'm just making a small frittata today, so I'm just going to use two eggs, but you can scale that up to however big your family is. Now, I'm a great one just for cracking on and putting things straight into the pan. However, not that many days ago, I was doing that and I came across a bad egg. And fortunately, I was cracking them all into the same bowl, but it did mean <clears throat> that I lost all of those eggs and I had to start again. So, good tip is to make sure that you crack them singly into a bowl and just crack on one side, put your two thumbs gently in and then prise them open. She says, there we go. So there's one and we can see that that's perfectly okay. And then here is the second and we're putting our thumbs in and then just Rising it open and again say so the children will love to do that and there's our second egg and that's going into my bowl if my vegetables are stirred. So this dish will take a little while to cook when you've got the eggs in so the vegetables don't have to be cooked all the way through before you start the next part of this process. So I'm going to take a fork and I'm just going to whisk up my eggs. Now you can make this go a little further by putting a splash of milk in there. It's at this stage that I would normally put a little seasoning in. Um, not too much because we've got some cheese to go in later so the salt will be within the cheese and we don't want to um, have too much of that. And just a little pepper to add some flavour. It really does just season it rather than flavour it. And again, I'm going to use um, some mixed herbs, which you may well have some left. If you don't have any mixed herbs, if you can just find some chives or something hanging around, anything that's green with a little bit of flavour, we can put into our eggs and just give it a stir. So as you can see, it's not a huge amount of eggs, but that is going to do just nicely. So over here, you can see that our vegetables are doing, the onions have begun to soften, the courgettes have got a little bit of colour and the good things to test by are the mushrooms and we can see that they're beginning to cook through. So they're cooked enough to be able to put our mixture into. So we're going to put this back on the gas now and show you the secrets of a frittata. So that's gone back on. I'm going to take my egg mix and I'm going to pour that directly into the pan and make sure we get all that egg goodness out of there and just give it a stir just to make sure that all the vegetables are coated with some egg. There we go. <clears throat> and then I'm going to put my cheese in So what we've done now is we've sealed the egg on the bottom of the pan 
and then I'm just going to lightly stir the cheese in between the vegetables without disturbing the bottom too much and they're going to cook just nicely on the top. So we're going to leave that undisturbed on a medium heat so again it's cooking through without catching on the bottom hopefully. So other ideas for putting into your frittata is basically anything that you can find. So we've got courgettes and mushrooms and peppers and tomatoes. You could equally use, as I said, some cauliflower. You might have green beans or you could dig some peas or sweet corn out of the freezer. Really whatever the, uh, the children would like to put in there, whatever makes a really nice color and some flavor. So uh, if you're going to use frozen veg, then I would just bring them um, out of frozen state uh, and thawed, not necessarily cook them because the time they spend in the pan they will warm through and cook so you don't need to pre-cook them otherwise that they will go a little bit mushy. So that's going to take, um, oh no we're, we're, we're almost there with this one as you can see. So if I take my spatula here you can see that the bottom has set quite nicely but the top is still quite runny. That's absolutely fine. So what we're going to do is put this now into the grill so that it's been cooked from the bottom and now we're going to grill it on top. So I'm gonna put that under my grill, which is here, and that might take a few minutes. So whilst that is in the grill, browning off, I just wipe my surface down, keep everything nice and clean. So I did say last time that I would tell you about why it looks like I'm cooking in a cupboard. Well, I'm actually uh, very fortunate to have a motorhome and if the camera can just swing a little way this way, you'll see what it sort of looks like on the outside. So we're in through this door here and this is my kitchen area. And the reason we're in here is because at home in my kitchen, I've got one of those long thin kitchens and I haven't got a worktop where I can stand and talk to you and show you what's going on. And if I were to go to the kitchen at church, which is great and we've got that lovely big counter and I'd be able to do it there with lots of lovely light, um, as soon as we want to put the gas on we have to have the ventilation so the fans go on and that makes a huge amount of noise and so you can't actually hear what's going on over the sound of the ventilation. So we hit on this genius idea of cooking in our motorhome and I thought that if I can produce these dishes in this tiny little workspace here then I think um, we've got the right sort of dishes that we know that you can prepare at home. So that's where we've been for the last five or six weeks and we've had great fun but it has been at times extraordinarily warm um, but today's a little cooler so that's good. So I'm just going to check to see what uh, our frittata now looks like. Oh it's not quite ready but as you can see it's now um, solid on the top but we uh, would like to see that uh, a little browner but uh, if I just loosen the sides again you can see that that's going to come out quite nicely but it does need just a little more um, cooking on the top so we'll put that back under. So when that's ready it's something that you can serve with in a variety of ways. I would normally serve that perhaps with a little green salad with a crusty roll on the side or some bread. You can um, placate the children if that's the right word by allowing them to have red sauce with it because it's quite good to, to dip in um, with that. You can serve it with some baked beans and that again adds some carbohydrate and some extra protein as well. So you've got your frittata on one side and your beans on the other so that's really good. You can serve it with any cooked hot veg as well if you want to. Um, and the great thing about this dish, and I'm going to take this out of here now, the great thing about this is that it is an absolute gem of a dish to serve cold and so you can put any leftovers in the fridge um, and have it as a um, snack item. You can cut it into fingers um, and serve it as a safer snack or you can um, use it for a picnic. It 
does really, really well um, to slice up and wrap in some grease proof or something. Now I'm going to turn this one this way just to prove to you that the other side, I would normally just turn this out oh, um, as it was, but uh, I wanted to prove that this was nicely cooked um, on the other side. Let's see if I can centre that on the plate. There you go. So you can now see that it was lovely and brown from the other side, the top was cooked and then if we cut into that you can see all those lovely vegetables that have been cooked through there. So serve this hot as it is at the moment, as you can see steam coming everywhere. Um, if not, allow it to cool and then put it in the fridge and then it will be really quite uh, chunky and cuttable. So that would be really, really good. So that's my frittata. I do hope you have fun making that. As I said, this is the last of our series this summer and uh, it's been great fun bringing these dishes to you. I'm really sorry that we couldn't have you at church and uh, see you all and meet with you all, but uh, these are really difficult times, aren't they? So we hope you've enjoyed your summer and that although um, things have been a bit strange, we hope you've been able to build some lovely memories together. And for those of you who have children going back to school, after five months, I think life is going to be very strange again maybe take some getting used to so we'll try and keep in contact with you and um, good luck to all those that are starting school for the first time or moving schools or changing and uh, do keep in touch if there's anything we can do my name's linda and this has been great fun bringing these uh, series to you during the summer and um, we hope to see you back at church very soon take care god bless bye bye